guys legit one of my favorite childhood traditional recipes that I love making cooking and eating and this week's recipe of the week it is going to be my coconut fish stew now we're talking about creaminess of the coconut we're talking about that whole beautiful fish Guys, I cannot stress this enough how easy this recipe is. Now, I know a lot of people get intimidated with like whole fishes and everything like that, but please don't be. The only thing that you need to make sure to do once you get that whole beautiful fish is for them to pretty much scale everything on the fish so it's nice and clean. You wanna make sure that those eyes are nice and red and fresh and you have yourself a good to go fish. Even if you'd like, you can even leave the tail um, at the end or you can just, you know, kind of trim the tails and trim the outside like you'll see in the video. You can definitely ask your butcher to do this. Don't be embarrassed and don't be shy because they want to help you. It's something that my mom taught me and it's something that I grew up eating. And honestly, when I feel like I need comfort, I make this recipe. Like this is my actual cozy go-to recipe. And I pair this with a tortones or patacones, however you'd like to say it. And that's pretty much smashed fried plantains and you know, a nice cup of cozy white rice because that is just the OG way to make it and eat it but you can have this just as is you can even have this with your hands eat it with your hands eat it with a fork but it is just so versatile the flavors are so amazing and I hope you guys make this recipe because it is just super super easy so guys let's head on to the clips let's start by gathering all of our ingredients just to make things a little bit more simpler and easier i wanted to mention with the bell peppers i would say use colors think vibrancy think colors when it comes to choosing your bell peppers now for the fish as you'll see i've made two slits right in the middle and the reason i like making the slits is because i do like seasoning it with pepper lemon and salt in the slits like you'll see in the video a bit shortly i love going inside the crevices i love going inside those lines and getting those flavors in there so pretty much what i'm doing is i am patting the fish completely dry because it was a bit wet i did ask my butcher to scale off everything to trim the tail and also to clean the inside like you'll see like I'm showing in the video, and also to scissor the tops of the gills and also the bottoms. And now I'm just seasoning with your basic sea salt, but you can definitely use whatever salt you have, like you'll see inside the crevices, all over the fish. Make sure you get it really, really nice in there. And now we're hitting it with that fresh lime juice right inside those crevices, even the eyeballs everywhere pretty much, because we want to get the maximum flavor. Next, what we're going to do is just going to flip the fish over and we're going to just do the same thing. You know, we want to do a generous amount of salt. Generous, I mean, for right here, I used one teaspoon of salt and just use the rest of the lime. If you want to add one whole lime, you can definitely do so. But for this the fish, I did use only half a large lime. The last step to seasoning this is we're adding freshly ground pepper. Like you see, I'm definitely adding literal freshly ground pepper. But listen, if you just have the regular ground black pepper, then go ahead and use that. I know in my country, um, they usually have a peppercorn based black pepper that it's kind of difficult to find. So I would just say stay with freshly ground black pepper or just regular black pepper that you can just get at the grocery store. It works and please season generously on both sides. And now we are finished with our prep of a fish. Next, turn your stove top to a medium high heat and in a large deep skillet, brazier, or a deep saute pan, pour in your olive oil or oil of choice and let this come up to a heat. Now we are going to be adding in our fresh colorful veggies and that means our carrots are going in, our colored peppers and onions, 
everything is going in that beautiful pan. And pretty much what you'll see that I love doing is adding a little bit of salt when I'm mixing this. And it's, this is just a tiny bit of salt. And this is just to really get those veggies sweating and cooking a little bit more faster. Add a bit of black pepper and this is optional. Now we want to cook and saute the veggies till al dente. We don't want them to be thoroughly cooked because we will be cooking these veggies more when we stew the fish. And now we are going to be adding in our cornstarch and this is going to be so crucial because this is going to make the sauce extra creamier and extra thicker. Besides the coconut, this is really going to elevate this dish. Let's mix this once again to get everything incorporated with that cornstarch and those veggies. And lastly, we're going to be adding in our chopped tomatoes. Now, the reason I do add the chopped tomatoes all the way at the end, because it is the most tender vegetable of the onion, carrots, and peppers. This is the last step of adding everything together before we add in our fish. And we definitely wanna cook this down for three to two minutes. I would say anywhere between two to three minutes. We just wanna make sure that the veggies stay al dente. Mind you guys, we are still at a medium high heat. Once we've sauteed this for a bit, we are going to be turning down the stove top to a medium heat. Add in your seasoned whole fish, tucking it into the pan and onto the sauteed vegetables. Like you see, my fish was an extra large fish, a little bit more love, so I had to really tuck it in there. That's why we need to use a deep pan for this. Now we're just adding in our full fat coconuts. Milk, please guys, make sure you are using full fat coconut milk for this recipe. And now for our seasonings, we are adding one teaspoon of a dried oregano on top of that beautiful coconut milk and fish. Next, we're adding in one teaspoon of paprika. It could either be regular paprika or smoked paprika. And lastly, we're going to be using one teaspoon of Badia seasoning, sazón completo. If you don't have Badia seasoning, don't worry about it. Just use a sazón completo mix. Let's add in our one fourth cups of sliced onion. This is about two whole large stems of scallion. And next we're going to be adding about three to four tablespoons of chopped cilantro. Now this really does make a whole lot of difference, but if you don't like cilantro, then just submit it and you can even replace it with parsley. Now we're adding a bit more of freshly ground black pepper. And this is pretty much the whole preparation to make this amazing fish guys. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of that sauce and those beautiful veggies more on top of that fish like you see in the video just to give it a bit more of juiciness of that creaminess on top because we are going to be adding a lid and letting the lid be and just chill and relax and cook for five to seven minutes. Once the five and seven minutes are up, look at this deliciousness. We're just pretty much opening the lid. And at this point, like you'll see in the video, you have two options. You can leave the fish as is and just cook it for another 10 minutes with the lid on, or you can do what I'm doing. And that is just a traditional style that I was learned how to, you know, cook this recipe. And I'm literally just going to turn over the fish very carefully guys you want to take your time you want to make it slow i'm using a fish spatula and also um some tongs but you can definitely use it however you feel most comfortable turning the fish like i said this is optional it's very tricky, but you can definitely do it. You can definitely do the turning, but if you don't want to do the turning, just leave the fish as is and just keep basting it, you know, every two to three minutes. So literally what you just saw was me flipping over the fish and now I'm adding more of those veggies on top and more of that coconut milk on top. And I'm pretty much, the only thing that I'm gonna be doing is adding a little bit more salt and a little bit of more black pepper like I said, the black pepper is up to you. If you want to add it, great. It gives flavor. But if you don't like too much black pepper, then just don't do it. <laughs> 
and add in your lid now and we have let this fish cook i did a little fast forward for 10 minutes so the first cooking is five to seven minutes we're going to flip the fish over and then we're going to cook it for another 10 minutes and you'll see how it just turns to this mustardy orange beautiful color with those amazing stewed vegetables this really just makes that dish that much more special now that this creamy coconut fish stew recipe is done we are going to be plating up this with the traditional style that i love so much and that is pretty much taking a huge plantain leaf and adding your favorite sides for this dish i'm enjoying it with my favorite uh traditional sides which are patacones tostones white rice a little bit of scallions on top and i just want to show you guys look how beautiful and tender this fish is you see i have no knife cutting through it it's just my fish spatula and i'm literally just taking this out and putting it right on top of that plantain leaf look how beautiful and tender this fish is and with that beautiful creamy mustardy looking coconut sauce guys amazing look at that color look at those textures guys this is such a comfort for me and i hope that you guys make this recipe because like you see it's so easy it's so versatile there's so much love, so much flavor, and it's such a crowd pleaser with those Caribbean flavors and those Caribbean sides. Well, guys, this is the recipe for this week. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make it. Let me know how it goes, and I will see you next week with a brand new video. Friends, please make sure to give this video a big like, share, and subscribe, and I will leave you with the rest of the B-roll, aka food porn. Ciao.